All right. Hello, my name is Andy Hamm, and I'm here to talk a little bit about metric mastery and to provide some help here. Metric mastery is divided into three parts. There is the estimation part, the metric conversions part, and the measurement part. We're going to talk about the estimation and the measurement parts right now. What you would normally see at a station is you might see uh, an object for uh, or a, a, a series of objects. In this case, we've got a ball right here. And let's say the estimation is to estimate the diameter of the ball in centimeters. And the students would estimate what that is. They don't have any tools uh, for that. For the measurement part, they would be given a tool with the same objects that were used during the estimation part to measure. What will usually happen is part A is the estimation part, so all the stations will be set up. Part B is the metric conversions. So while the kids are working on the metric conversion part, the event supervisor can go around the room and add the measuring tools during this time. So in this case, I have a few different examples. I've got a meter stick here with measurements to the half centimeter. On the other side, I have a meter stick with measurements to the one millimeter. Let's use this side to the one millimeter. Since this is an analog measurement and there are measurements to the one millimeter, that means we get one uncertain digit, which would mean this can be measured to the nearest point uh, one millimeters. Or if we wanted to rate, measure it to the nearest cent or, or measure it in centimeters, it would be to the point. 0.01 centimeters for the precision, and that's how we the students would then measure this and record that. They might also have things like uh, estimate the time or estimate the average velocity of a ball dropping from the table. So they would have to estimate what that velocity would be, and let's say it's in meters per second. We should uh, event supervisors should provide these units. And then for the measurement part, the students may have a stopwatch and a meter stick, and they could measure both of those. Now, this stopwatch is a digital tool of measure, and this is only to the nearest hundredth of a second. You don't add any uncertain digits to digital measurements. So then the kids could measure, you know, do it, uh, measure how long it takes the ball to drop, measure the uh, height and do some math. They might have a pen. Estimate the length of the pen in uh, millimeters. And then for their measurement, they might have something like this that has um, centimeters with markings to the nearest 0.5 millimeters, which would be 0 0.05 centimeters. Since that is not to a uh, a one's place, the the uncertain digit would be to the 0.1 millimeter or 0 0.01 centimeter like it was on this meter stick as well. They might be given a, a sample here. Estimate the mass of the sample and they're allowed to heft it for that. And then they would be given a, a digital scale, something like this, would come in and they could measure it during the measurement one. Uh, part. They might also be asked to do a, uh, a volume uh, or a, a density calculation with this as well then. And again, if they have a digital scale, that's a digital measurement, so that is going to be no uncertain digits. This graduated cylinder has markings to the one millimeter, milliliter that is, notice 70 to 80, and since it has markings to one milliliter, the uncertain digit is to the 0.1 milliliters. This graduated cylinder has markings to the 0.2 milliliters. That means it's not to the ones place, so that means the uncertain digit is to the 0.1 milliliter. This is a much larger graduated cylinder, but it only has markings every 10 milliliters. 500, 510, 520. So this would have the uncertain digit to the 1 milliliter precision. Those could all be used as possible tools and uh, tools of measure. And you might have samples where students have to, they have an empty, uh, they have the water provided in a cup 
and they need to estimate the volume of it or the density of it. And then they have to pour it, uh, measure the empty graduate cylinder, pour the water into the graduate cylinder, find the mass of that, uh, subtract them, and then find, uh, divide by the volume, things like that that you can do other than just simple direct measurement. There can be calculations as well. It could be things like balls falling, rolling off of tables, rolling on ramps, or anything that could be measured or calculated can be included. But the bottom line for the event is we're getting down to using our measuring tools properly, representing the proper level of precision for tools, and measuring with as much uh, care and technique as possible. Possible.